Hello everybody, welcome to our first ever episode of ASAP Physics. Today we will be covering the concepts of a simple harmonic motion. In simple harmonic motion, we will specifically be covering what a simple pendulum is. As we have done before, we would start off with first with experiments and then derive many important concepts from it. From there, we would derive and apply formulas in solving real life problems with a basic pendulum. So what is a pendulum? A pendulum is basically where a mass is hung by a string as we can see in this virtual experiment. The pendulum's motion is basically where the mass swings back and forth with the only force of gravity. There is no other force acting on the object, such as friction or air resistance. Now let's talk about some important characteristics of a simple pendulum. When the pendulum string is in a vertical position, as we can see in this virtual experiment, we say that the pendulum is in its equilibrium position. Now let's talk about some important forces that act on the pendulum. The main cause for the pendulum to moving back and forth is because of the restoring force. When the pendulum is not in its equilibrium position, the restoring force tries to bring the pendulum back to the equilibrium position, as you can see in this virtual experiment. However, sometimes the restoring force overshoots the pendulum across the equilibrium position, bringing its, bringing its back and forth movement. Now let's talk about the displacement and amplitude of a simple pendulum. If we see in this virtual experiment, the distance between the equilibrium position to the current location of the pendulum is known, as the, uh, is known as the displacement. Now, what is the amplitude of a pendulum? Well, the amplitude of the pendulum is the maximum displacement of a pendulum in either sides. So now let's talk about what a period of a pendulum is. Well, the amount of time it takes for a, for a pendulum to complete one full cycle is referred to as the period. Well, what is a cycle? Well, let's take this as a starting position of the pendulum. As it moves back and forth in this position, it's halfway through the cycle. When it comes back to the origin or the starting position, we refer to this as completing one full cycle. The amount of time it takes to complete this one full cycle is referred to as the period of a pendulum. Now let's talk about some important facts about the pendulum. To start with, let's look into the relationship between the pendulum's period and the pendulum's mass. As you can see in this virtual experiment, pendulum number one has a greater mass compared to pendulum number two. Now let's go through this experiment and see how the mass affects the period of the pendulum. As you can see, throughout the flight, the, the, both pendulums remain at the same position. From this, we can conclude that the period's pendulum does not depend on the mass of any pendulum. Why does this happen? Well, this is because the, as you increase the mass, the inertia also increases, making the pendulum go slower. However, since we increase the mass, the gravitational force also increases, canceling this force of inertia. Therefore, the restoring force is canceled, and that's why the period of the pendulum does not depend on the mass. Now let's talk about an, another important fact regarding the pendulum. Now, as you can see in this virtual experiment, pendulum number two has a shorter length of the string compared to pendulum number one. How does this affect the period of the pendulum? Well, as you can see here, pendulum number two has a shorter period compared to pendulum number one. This is because both pendulums have the same acceleration as they're starting from the same position. However, pendulum number one has a larger distance to cover as it, is, as it, as it has a much larger strain. Therefore, the pendulum number one has a larger period compared to pendulum number two. Now let's just get into a big recap of what we just explained. So the period of the pendulum does not depend on the mass of the object it's swinging with. The period of the pendulum also does not depend on the amplitude, basically meaning the release point of the pendulum. However, the pendulum's period does depend on the length of the string that connects the mass to the pendulum. As we recall earlier from this video, the period of the pendulum is basically the amount of time it takes for the pendulum to complete one full cycle. Well, how do we calculate this time? The amount of time it basically takes for the pendulum to complete one full cycle? Well, we just calculate for the period. The period formula is t, which is the period, times 2 pi, which is a constant, times square root of length over gravity. We'll dissect this formula a little more. So t, we know, is the period. The 2 pi is a constant that comes in every period of a pendulum formula. Well, now what length are they talking about? Well, this length is basically the, string, the length of the string that connects the pendulum to the mass. 
that in this scenario is going to be the length of this string holding the mass. And for gravity, we would use positive 9.81 meters per second squared. That's all I have for the concepts of a simple pendulum. See the following video to do practice problems that would definitely come on any physics test on simple pendulums.